Hey, everybody, this is Tony, and I'm here today with a special guest, uh, actress and veteran actress, I'm sorry, uh, Miss yeah. Deborah Lacey. How are you Hello. today? Hey, I'm what's sorry. up, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm well. I'm really well, Tony. I mean, considering that we're in the middle of two pandemics, I, right, right. My heart is, is aching along with everybody else that I'm looking forward yeah. to the other side of all this. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is uh, definitely a lot. It's, it's like you said, it's two pandemics. Um, I know for myself, uh, it's been a range of emotions throughout the last, uh, now I won't even say week, I'll say a few months. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, yeah I, I time, definitely understand. Every time we have to face one of these beautiful, young black men, women, you know, die, killed just because of the color of their skin, it's just, it's too much, you know? Right. People are, are fed up, they're angry. And this this mood that we're going through in this one, way different. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. It's finally and- as I- I hear people say that straw that broke the camel's back. That's it. Mm-hmm. No, more, no more that can be taken after this. Laws have to change. Accountability has to happen. You know, these cops that get fired and then move somewhere else, that's got to stop. I mean, yeah. It's, it's, it's got to be some, some answers now. People are yeah. aware they're going to vote. I really believe that. People are going to get out and vote in this election like they had never voted before. Mm-hmm. It's already happening. You can tell that the spirit of voting in America is in the air. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Because right now, at, at times like these, um, I, you know, of course we shouldn't wait till things like this happen, but we absolutely need leaders um, in yeah. place who are going to, you know, be accountable for things when stuff like this happens, uh, although it shouldn't happen, but yeah, yeah. Should we get in that situation? We need somebody to say, okay, we'll we'll handle this. And I think well, that's I mean, what you know, it, this we'll, has been happening since the beginning of time. I mean, people right. rise up, you know, when injustices happen. Japan just went through it. I mean, uh, they probably mm-hmm. feel it. It, it. it just when you are mistreated for so long, there's only so much more that you can take. And then the yeah, people absolutely. decide that they're not taking any more. So. You know, what does the Bible say about righteous indignation? Well, that's mm-hmm. what we're doing right now. It's a righteous indignation. So people need exactly. to just stop their behavior and and live in peace. I mean, yeah. black people are not angry, violent, vicious people like they want, you know, to create these images of us that we are. We really aren't. We, we have hearts that are peaceful and kind and loving and but then they bring that out but then they mm-hmm. you know, it's mm-hmm. so bad and, and you have to react to stuff and then all of a sudden that's the image that that's the stereotype that's what we're going to go with you know it's, it's, right it's everybody in this you know group of people who are looting and and rioting and it's already come out that it's not even the protesters that are doing that so exactly to keep that dialogue going, you know, it's a distraction from people who really are trying to make a difference. So I stand with yeah. the protesters who are out there, you know, trying to make things better. And and they are going to get better, too. That's the thing. We know that this uprising is going to lead to better laws, better communication, um, better jobs, you know, health care. I mean, there's just so many issues of why this is happening right now. And it would happen yeah, in the right. middle of the day because it was mm-hmm. supposed to, you know? Yeah. So people are available to be out on the streets like this uh, because mm-hmm. they don't go to. So, you know, God has this plan, man, and we just have to go with it. That's how I feel Absolutely. It. Absolutely. <laughs> and I, hopefully, uh, I won't say this will pass over. Um, what I mean is hopefully some justice will be brought in this situation and hopefully it'll, it'll shed light and, and it'll help change things. Um, of course it won't, um, make 
a, a, a difference so much that it won't happen ever again, but hopefully it can start a conversation on action. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think that yeah. that dialogue is happening. I think that people are moving in the right direction. I mean, we have a candidate, Joe Biden, who's out there trying to, you know, be on our side, speaking up for us. So right. there are definitely some encouraging um, things that are happening that could give us hope. So I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with the hope that I feel where people are being positive and saying the things that need to be said. And a lot of these police chiefs who are standing up, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a, a police force that clearly has been infiltrated with the wrong kind of people. They're power hungry. Right. They feed on mistreating people of color. It's, it's just a whole system that needs to be, you know, looked at and changed. I mean, they know right. that this is happening. And so it needs to just stop once and for all and get fixed. And it's not mm-hmm. that hard to fix. I mean, people have records. This right, is, right. Joy, uh, George Floyd, he had a record of, of Correct. Being, you know. So, I mean, why does he get to stay in his job? It just doesn't make any sense. And then they fall exactly. back to the unions. Well, I have a union. But my union is not going to protect me if I go out and kill somebody. You know what I'm saying? At all. So At I, all. I, don't, I don't get this, oh, the police union thing. It, you know, they have so many rights. Well, you know, mm-hmm. the American citizens have rights too, right? That's right. <laughs> just, some of this stuff just doesn't make any sense to me. So. Yeah. And you know what? And the American citizens do have rights, just like you said, and and one of them is uh, exactly what they're out there doing now, and that's out there peaceful protesting. Absolutely, um, yeah. You know, and like you, you said, and some of those people. About peace. Yeah. And, and right, right. Most, I mean, these people who are sincere about being heartbroken, it's about peace. It's about right. once and for all, please, let's all get together, white, black, you know, Asian, Latina, even the Native Americans, you know, are mm-hmm. out in the world. I mean, when you see people that are showing up in masses all over the world, Amsterdam, yes. Berlin, yes. It, it's, you know that something is not right, <laughs> okay? The human race exactly. is upset, <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's where I get my my encouragement from. And human beings know the difference between right and wrong. And mm-hmm. there's always going to be a fight for justice. There's always, you know, going to be people who will ultimately say this is wrong and stand up for it. it so yeah. I, I'm, I'm just encouraged that there's so many of us now who realize things need to change. So yeah, maybe absolutely. America is the leader of this. You know, these other, I, you know, I need the support to me from these other countries because they know they have issues in their own country. The same thing has happened. This racist attitude that people have towards races, you know, it's nothing new. It's nothing that uh, not all these other countries ha- can't, you know, relate to. So Right. And it's not foreign to them. To get this poison out of the air once and for all, you know. Mm-hmm. So, Absolutely. I, I feel, I feel very encouraged. So I don't know yeah, if it's just uh, in, but you know, <laughs> that's the interesting part for me is is to see how long this goes on. This has already been seven days, and it seems like it's just getting more fuel. There's just more people. Yeah, doing it. yeah. It see, yeah. it's only been seven days, and it feels like at least a yeah. month already. Yeah, it does exactly. Yeah. Yeah, people but out there risking I'm, their lives, even with this pandemic going on, that says a lot, you know. Exactly, and and I think too, it shows just how uh, you know passionate and uh, upset or confused or all the emotions that they might yeah. be going through. They're they're choosing to show that in that way, and I respect that so much. Um, oh my for the people who yeah. are peaceful protesting, and not the people who are looting and all that other stuff, because you know some of them yeah. are just doing that to to cause that distraction, like you said. But well, they've been waiting for a reason to be a criminal. 
I mean, right. <laughs> if you out there windows and stealing stuff that you know belongs to you, I mean, that's who you are. That has nothing right. to do with people who are out there because their heart is broken. You know exactly. So you have to exactly. really have to you know separate the two, and and they're doing right. that. They are trying to get after the people who are the real looters and taking advantage of the situation. That's that's one issue. And the police, whoever needs to deal with that, they can deal with that. But the, the main thing that's happening now is this issue of police brutality and, and, and right. Black Lives Matter. It, right. It, people have to just finally, once and for all, face the killing of... of um, of black people in this country is is not normal. It's just, and we're not gonna just sit back and try to look at it like it is normal. Oh well, you know, exactly. That's just another one that did, you know, died in the hands of police. You know, white cops. They're all there. It goes again. You know, it, mm-hmm. there's one mm-hmm. reason for it. He didn't comply. You know, it's, mm-hmm. uh, or, or the latest one I'm hearing now is they just approach him and say, "Oh, don't you have a warrant?" <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, I saw that. I mean, it's 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 just outrageous the way they have yeah, allowed too much. these cops to get away with, and and then they do it with such arrogance too. I mean, it's like they right. know there's not going to be a, uh, any real uh, answering to it. Okay, slap on the wrist. I'll take a little paid vacation, or I'll get fired here, and I'll just go to work over there. You know. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's what's happening. They they're willing to do that. Kill a black man. It just doesn't make any sense. So yeah. it, there, there's so much um, that has built up. It, it's all the way up to, like they say, George Floyd's neck. I mean, people just have had it up to the neck. It's, there's right. no place else to go with this anger. It, it, it's got to have a way to come out. And, and this protesting, I, that's what I say. I, I think it's just going to go on until people finally can feel like they can breathe. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, yeah. So That's true. It's, it's, it's hard to watch, but I totally get it, man. I totally get it. Yeah, absolutely. I agree <laughs> uh, a, a thousand percent. I um, hear you. But on a anyway, lighter note. Anyway, more positive. Uh, <laughs> more yeah, lighter. yeah. Let's, lighter. let's talk about some uh, acting uh, for a minute. Oh, uh, yeah. Now, of course, You've been a, a, a actress for over thirty years at this point now. Yeah, um, and I yeah, it is. I attach that veteran to my name. It just kind of makes me a little proud that I've survived yeah, thirty. Years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My first job was um, the White Shadow. My first mm. acting, my first line in a in a motion moving picture television mm-hmm. show. Uh, was the White Shadow? Yeah, I was working mm-hmm. opposite um, Kevin Hook. <laughs> wow. What? Yeah. So, what made you want to be an actress, though, out of all the things that you could have done? Yeah, because you know, it's just something that's always been in my blood. I don't know a time in my life that I didn't want to perform on stage. I mean, I guess um, it comes honestly. My dad was a blues recording artist. So I grew up okay. with a lot of music um, in my house. I used to listen to him playing his guitar and recording his music, making <laughs> records and all that stuff. And he had a lot of success in the 60s uh, before he passed away. His uh, recording um, name was TV Slim, for those who might want to be interested in some blues. Um, okay. But, yeah, my dad was... Um, you know, had he lived, I probably would have gotten into music, actually, uh, because mm. I really loved um, listening to him, his voice and, and his lyrics. And, you know, music, I guess, was my first love. Um, but then I had this graduation when I was five years old from kindergarten. i never forget it. Yeah. And that sparked it because <laughs> I was on stage and I was singing this little song, Born Free, as free as the wind blows. As free as the grass grows. I mean, that that song is an old song, but it has stayed with me because it was a little routine that I sang at my, with a couple other girls. We had this little group, and it was a graduation 
from kindergarten. So they had, mm-hmm. you know, the kids perform at the graduation. And so I don't know how this little group of I think it was the three of us got together and decided we were going to sing this little song for graduation and perform it and everything. And they had a little stage there and it was an audience, you know, all the mothers and people and all that. And they went crazy after we finished our little <laughs> thing. The audience got up and they stood and I wasn't expecting that. We were up there just having fun, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And they just really loved it. So it, that embracement of entertaining an audience, it has never left me. So there it is. I started on stage. Wow. I did a lot of theater when I first started. And I thought that that's where I was going to go, was into theater, really. Um, okay. But then, you know, it's not a lot of money in theater, though. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to be able to move to New York and stay there. That was never a goal of mine. If I w- wanted to do Broadway, that, that would be different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, I really wanted to start making money at it uh, professionally. So once I decided, um, once I left high school and I left college and um, I decided that I was going to make a career out of it, then it became about, okay, how can I keep this? career and make some money and and keep doing it so right right it was I decided to be a professional (laughs) wow okay that's very interesting uh especially since you said your father was a singer and then you end up being a a actress yeah he was a a blues blues recording artist yeah wow Um, so and then my dad he used to always (laughs) <laughs> I lost him when I was 13, though. That was unfortunate. Uh, but like oh, I wow. said, if I lived, I probably would have done maybe more musical theater or something like that. I don't know. But um, but my love of acting uh, has always been with me. Like I said, since I had that performance, it all, and I never loved singing as much, you know. So I don't, okay. I'm not a singer. I don't tell people that I, I sing. I mean, I'm an actress who can carry a tune, you know, that type of thing. <laughs> but uh, I've never had a love of, of singing. Um, I started as a model from high school. I kind of got an agent because mm-hmm. I graduated and, and got into one of those beauty contests for the scholarship. And I won a Miss Teenage Elegant uh, pageant. And that gave okay. me the money that I needed, even though I did get scholarships too, um, academic to go on to to college but I I did this pageant and there was an agent happened to be in the audience and a modeling agent and Mm -hmm. me into the modeling world and I started that way but then I started meeting people who were also agents in the theatrical and commercial world so On one of my modeling gigs, a commercial agent approached me, and so I ended up getting a commercial agent, and that got me into the Professional Screen Actors Guild Union. So mm-hmm. once I was in the union, I was able to um, get a television and film agent. So I don't okay. remember how that came along, my first television. I'm sure I probably pursued it, because I've always been one of those people who go after what I want too. I you know Right, I, right. I play chess, so you know <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, you have to. You know, yeah. You gotta set up a move and, and then, you know, make it happen, man, you know? Yeah. So One, I probably sued an agent that I heard or you know, people refer you to other actors say, Oh, this person's good, that person, whatever. So definitely right. had really great support um with other actors who, mm-hmm. you know, want to help you get where you need to go, too, so. Yeah. 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 That's, a, that's, that's great, though, but um, just like you said, you have to play that, that kind of, uh, or you have to have that kind of mindset. Um, yeah. It's funny uh, that you said you started out in theater and, you know, just telling me some of your story. Um, you know, I did, or I don't know if you know, but I did an interview with uh, Hawthorne uh, not too yeah, long ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. And uh, he was uh, saying some of the same stuff, basically. Um, yeah. But it, it's just funny to hear that. Um, but yeah, once you got... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's amazing. Um, And one thing about you um, that I have noticed throughout the years, or just looking at your work, you have had a a staying power. And unlike some people, um, or or a lot of people, I'm not going to say some, a lot of people that come in this industry and they get a role here or there, and it's like, okay, I don't know where my next job is coming from, so I'm just quitting. Yeah, but you yeah, have sure. really um, been a, 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 a staple in acting, whether it's been a small role, a recurring role, or a lead role, or whatever it may have been. You have stayed on it. Yes, yeah. I haven't been that series regular yet, though. That's my okay. Thing. I kind of the last couple of years, I, I kind of because first I thought you know I did a couple movies and you know early on in my career I, I did a couple of European films that took me to Europe and. You know, my first leading lady stuff was films that um, German production, um, and then another one in, in London uh, hired me to work opposite Anthony Perkins in his last feature film. So my first focus was on movies when I started okay. doing these movies, but I didn't know that um, television could be as powerful. It's gotten so much better, the roles in, in TV and stuff. So yeah. first I kind of got distracted with a lot of where I thought I might go in movies. I mean, I still would love to do movies, but now I, I am more interested in the small screen, and, and they have embraced me um, with a lot of guest star stuff and great roles over the years. So that's kind of built my helped build my resume for me. Right. It's, you know, yeah, recurring you know, and all this stuff. Um, most recently, you know, Mad Men, I thought was going to that role was going to turn into something. Um, mm-hmm. People really liked Carla um, in that in that series, and you know we won the best drama Emmy all four right, years. Right. Did it did it for the first four years, so I thought that would turn in um, to something. But that you know the plight of, of the black actors in this business is no different than any other. Uh, right. Uh, trying to you know, <laughs> up into, you know, type of thing. So um, so it hasn't really, it, it didn't turn into a, a, a series regular role. Um, but that is my focus now. I kind of want to get into a drama um, show. And like we were talking about, so, so the one I'm working on now on um, UMC, the Urban Movie Channel. I was um, just going to mention that, yeah. Yeah, it, it, this role of, of Auntie May uh, in A House Divided, I'm working with uh, Lauren Silva Jacobs and oh, Paula, yeah. Jai, um, Paula Jai Parker. And, you know, we, we're just having a ball. I mean, this show is very adult. <laughs> you know, it's very uh, today. You know, when I first started working on it in season one, I only had one episode in, in season one. But okay. my whole feel for it when I first read all six episodes, because six episodes is a full season, it felt like a, a Black Dallas. As I was telling everybody, oh, I got into this great show. It's like a Black Dallas, you know. It's right, all, right. All the Black people, you know, and, and the family drama and the sisters and the brothers and the owners. <laughs> you know, so it had that all of that great drama and um into it and, and the realness of family and all that and legacy and all of that. Um, mm-hmm. So it, 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 and Auntie May um, is the peacemaker. She She's a real person. What I love about playing Auntie May, and, and certainly I can relate, um, I'm an auntie and my mom has a bunch of uh, grand and great uh, grandchildren. So I'm a, okay. I'm a many, many times over. Um, mm-hmm. So I can relate to the peace that she tries to bring into a family that is having all these issues, you know. Um, right. And then, of course, you know, there's there's the good ones and and there's the bad ones and and there's the ones that don't have a lot of conscience and there's the ones that you know do have a, a conscience. So she's right, kind of right. <laughs> in between, you know, all of them trying to keep them on the right path as much as she can. So mm-hmm. it's a great role. And um, I'm really proud of the show. It, it's getting nominated for a lot of daytime Emmys. And 
writing and directing. And the writing is just outrageous. I mean, we as actors, I mean, every time I, I get on the set and working um, with Paula, most of my scenes are, are with her. And mm-hmm. we just, you know, we, we're just amazed how good these words just come out. You know, like, wow. and, and that's always a good sign of, of writing for us. We get the right, words, right. and the character is going to be there. So mm-hmm. we, we're grateful. You know, Dan Garcia is his production company. He's, mm-hmm. he's the creature. He mostly writes and directs everything. He oversees everything. And great brother. We're very grateful um, to him that he wanted to create a show that has some quality, you know, about it. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I definitely have to check out season two uh, or check it out as a whole. Um, yeah. from, from what I understood, A House Divided was, um, from what I read, was like a black soap opera. <laughs> so, it is a black soap opera. They, they call it a black drama. That's what they okay. They call it a nighttime drama. And so that's, it's a soap. It's a nighttime. It is. And, and, and you know, it, it's a soap opera because it's a continuous story and it's not based on anything factual, you know, it's, it's just how much, how creative can we be with these characters doing all these outrageous things, you know, right, right. that only your imagination can imagine that they could do, you know, <laughs> so that's, a, that's a soap opera. I mean, but yeah, yeah. people like to see their imaginations challenged like that though. We, we like to yeah. see characters, you know, type of yeah. thing. So it's uh it, almost it like is. um it's a black, it's a black <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's almost like it well from you saying that it reminds me of like the plots on Greenleaf um on own th- that they have. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Exactly. It's, it's almost like some, cause some of the characters you almost want to just be you know, say like really? Like uh, yeah. can somebody kill him already or you you know, okay. something like that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're going behind the scenes in these people's lives and you just become a little bird, you know. But yeah. you can just watch what they do and, and, and commentate, <laughs> you know. Exactly. Oh, I can't exactly. You said that. Oh, oh no, she didn't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah. Great. And then everybody's sleeping with somebody they're not supposed to be sleeping with, you know. Yes, yeah, yeah, all the time. <laughs> yeah. Is 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 it's a lot of that exactly, but that's what makes it fun, and 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 you you don't really have to take it you know too serious. Just hopefully we're entertaining people. It's that's what I right. love. Like it, it started with that audience that was entertained. So hopefully mm-hmm. some entertainment from it, and and be happy that you watched it and and want to watch it again. I mean that's right. what it's about, you know. Yeah. Of course. And uh, now over the years, you, you've done a lot of uh, TV, like we're talking about now, yeah. um, and film. Um, but in, in taking roles or being offered roles, um, is there something or is there a process that you take when you uh, look at a script or, or take a role? Or, or is there some things that you say, I don't, I wouldn't do or something like that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Over the years. I mean, I had a, I've always had a standard about no nudity. I, I just don't. Okay. Not something that um, I've ever wanted to um, be a part of. It, it, I, right, I, right. I never felt that that was the avenue that, um, I mean, I've done love scenes in films, but it's always been, you know, but not nudity, you know, type of thing. Right. Like Right. around not showing me new, you know, type of thing. Mm-hmm. So um, that's just one a, a, a personal thing about me. I, I I don't really know why I, I feel that way. I, I don't have a problem with other people doing it. Um, <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, uh, yeah. me, I, maybe it's a shyness. I don't know. Um, it, it's not like I, I just feel like I have anything to show off, too, maybe. I don't know. But, okay. Uh, but um, I, I, it's a distraction for me. I, I'm, I'm more into, interested in who the person is, the character, what's coming from inside of them, where they're going, where they come from, um, than to be worried about, oh, she's going to need to take her clothes off, you know. Right, right. 
So sometimes I always have tried to work around that um, with people who want to work with me and, and there's nudity in the, in the project. And, you know, I've lost a job because I wasn't willing to do it, you know, here and there type of thing. But mm-hmm. then also they, they work with me and say, okay, like when I did my first love scene was with Harry Hamlin in um, that HBO series, The Hitchhiker. My first starring right. role was back here. Um but, you know, that show was known. HBO was very new. This was, a, um, like, I think, 85, 86, somewhere. It was just becoming on the map and being popular. And they had this show that was helping it along. The Hitchhiker pretty much put them on the map because they had all these celebrities and big-time movie directors that were directing this show. And um, and it was always nudity. There, there was every episode, you know, it was cable. So they were right, right, of course, at that time. So they could get away with it. They didn't have the same standards, you know, as, as network primetime television. So they were taking advantage of the fact that they could do nudity. So everybody, every episode, you, you know, somebody had a reason to take their clothes off. And so the script with <laughs> that me, it was the same thing. Um, they wanted me to have this love scene with, with Harry Hamlin and, agree to this nudity and but luckily you know the director of that was um philip noyce you know he's a big time movie director and Mm -hmm. uh when i met with him um they offered me the part and even though i said that they were going to have to use a double for me the part originally said it required nudity and i went on an audition for it because i'm always going to audition if i like the role Um, all right is you can work with people. So when they right. said they wanted to hire me, and did you know the the role requires nudity? I was like, well, I yeah, that's what it, it's saying, but that's not what I'm willing to do. Um, I know you guys can hire a body double. I mean, that was popular. I don't know how popular it is now. It seems like they really want celebrities to do these things now. But mm-hmm, mm-hmm. then a, a, a body double was the way actors could looked like they were being nude, but it wasn't them, you know, type of thing. Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, no, I, I'm thinking body double. So once <laughs> Philip heard that, you know, he was totally cool with it. He was like, oh, that's not required. She don't want to do it. That's fine, you know. So that's what they did. And, and, and Harry Hamlin was so cool to work with. He wasn't interested in trying to be nude in the scene either. So, right. you know, he he came out and um, choreographed this thing. He was telling me, his book, hey, so this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it. And we're going to tell them what we're doing. We're not going to let them tell us. <laughs> exactly. There <laughs> and, you go. <laughs> and, and the big star. So I was like, yeah, let's do that. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. So I, I, I've gotten away with, um, you know, this silhouettes of uh, nudity um, without actually having to do it. So. I'm grateful. Mm. But exactly. You know, to do what you I, want to do. Yeah, I it I am very self conscious. You know, it's it's funny because a lot of actors are shy. People think that we aren't because we can be out there in the public and, and do these things and but when I'm not working I and, and I'm just myself and you know, around friends and, and people, mm-hmm. I can be very shy. I I don't talk a lot, um to people that I don't know, you know, I've gotten better right. with, with these interviews with people like you, especially talking through the phone. It's great. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, don't worry. Know. Don't worry. I, ha- I have to adjust too. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. <laughs> no problem. Uh, but it, it is um, something, something different. And I think that too, when people see you on screen, uh, whether it's in a movie or it's on a show, they tend to uh, put you in that that character. So they yeah. think you are that person, even though you, you're really somebody else. Yeah, I, I can't really say that um, Auntie May uh, in The House Divide is definitely not me. She's very strong, uh, opinionated. <laughs> uh, she can even be tough. I mean, she's a fighter. Um I, I don't really have to use that side of, of me, Deborah Lacey, um, too much. So bringing her out um, 
in a role, you know, is great. And, and being real with it is, is great. Um, but no, I, I, I can't really think of, and then the, my first starring role, the, the film that I did in Africa, um, mm-hmm. in Timber, I was playing a Ghanaian African uh, princess. So okay. even she, you know, was tough and, and this was my first starring role being a leading lady too. Um, mm-hmm. And I was treated so well. I was, I was treated like a princess. <laughs> and, wow. And I, so that was different. Um, for me too, even adjusting to people, you know, wanting to do anything at my whim. I mean, I I had a car, I had a driver. I, I I had never been treated so well. Um, right, before. right. So so even that was was something different um, that I had to adjust to because they wouldn't let me walk around, you know, by myself because I was the star, the leading lady of of the film. So. I didn't have a lot, of, um, a lot of privacy, but that's definitely um, one of the best experiences of my life. I, I have to tell you, being able to see um, Ghana, to go to Africa, and, and I lived there. I was there for almost five months trying to finish that Oh, film. wow. Well, the director wanted every single shot to be on location there, and you know, it rained a lot. We were there, I think, from like September to January, February, something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it was the rainy season. So a lot of times we we couldn't shoot because of the weather, because of the conditions, you know, type of thing. So, right, right. But the people um, of Africa, I mean, it, it's just to know, to see who we are and 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 where we come from and it it's it's just an amazing experience it, if exactly. you, if we can get to africa if if you guys out there who um want to know where you come from understand that it is it's kings and queens and and royalty and love and respect and and dignity. I mean, <laughs> I, I love to tell people this story. I was walking down um, one of the roads and back then, you know, in the 80s, I think it's like 88, 89, something like that. Um, okay. Still a little, Ghana was still a little, you know, underdeveloped. It still had dirt roads and all that. Um, I mean, I was in a nice hotel and everything, but when I went outside of the hotel, um, the, the, the city was still being, we were in Kumasi, and it was still, okay. you know, in um, and the construction and everything. But uh, I was walking to the post office one day and this elder in the street uh, was walking past me. We were passing each other. And as I passed him, he turned around and, you know, they have those big sticks that they carry, they walk with too. And he started pounding it. What do you, what do you do? What do you do? What are you doing? And I said, "Oh, I'm sorry. What 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 did I do? I don't know. What? Hi, hello. <laughs> you know." Um, and he was like, "You passed by me and you don't speak, you know." And I was like, "Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, hello, I'm, I'm Deborah, you know." And he was like, "Who are you? Where you come from?" And I said, "I am I'm American. I I'm here. I'm an actress. I'm, I'm doing a movie." He said, "You know, American. You African." So you go, you visit America, <laughs> and now you don't know who you are. You don't know where you come from. And I said, Ooh. no, sir, really. I, I, I was born in America. I'm, I'm, I'm an actress. I'm, I'm doing a movie here. And he said, you are American? Who's your president? And I said, uh, Reagan, Ronald Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, he was, and then he just busted up laughing. Oh! You American, you black American lady. Oh, you funny. I know it. I don't know you. You, you look like us. And then, I, you know, <laughs> God made that happen because I was being so. I hadn't started filming yet when this happened. Okay. And I was so nervous about playing an African woman and, and giving her justice and and really being African and looking African and all that. Um, mm-hmm. I'm so proud that, that he stopped me and, and shared that with me and, and just confirmed that, yeah, this is where I come from. I, I'm African. Right, right. 
It was it was beautiful. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. Um just to have that experience for one thing, like you said, to even be over there and then to have, you know, somebody from there say those words to you. Yeah, it was amazing. Again, that's something that I, I could never forget. It it was such I mean, he was he he wasn't being mean to me or anything because you know, they this is what I mean about us as a people. We don't have mm-hmm. mean spirits. Meanness doesn't come right. out of um like some natural thing, you know, it, it's just there waiting to come out. That that mm-hmm. mean is is not a part of our nature, you know. Right. Um, so he got his point across um, aggressively, you know, but he was still being he. I mean, he was the elder, you know. He's like he's right, right. an elder. You don't speak. Um, and I apologized, you know, profusely when I realized what he was saying to me um and i never passed another elder without speaking <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was you know he, he taught me something about culture and respect and i mean this is who we are this is where we come from you know we we understand that and 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 that's in our history and my mother raised us the same way you know we you don't disrespect your elder you you just absolutely. don't absolutely you know, there, 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 there's a certain quality of life um, there that deserves respect. So, yeah, um, I, I, I was very grateful. I learned so much um, when I was there. It, it, it just is one of those things that I, you know, the movie got me there, and that was a great part and everything. But what I loved about Africa was my personal experiences. You know, right, right. <laughs> when I was there, that is a know? blessing. So, mm. Yeah, yeah, it really was. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of unforgettable, uh, now of course you you did uh, numerous films and TV shows, like I said, um, but one that I love the most uh, is the Five Heartbeats, of course. Ah, oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing but love for you, baby. That's right. <laughs> Yeah. So what was that uh, role like for you playing Rose? Oh my goodness! Um, in the five hearts, it, 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 it was. I, I got it. It was at least a year uh, of of uh, going through auditions um, for that uh, role. I, I really mm-hmm. wanted to work with Robert Townsend um, and Keenan, and we had known each other from just meeting on commercial auditions here and there um, because all of us started out in commercials. Um, Right. So I knew who he was. I knew what they were about. Um, I think he had done Hollywood Shuffle by then. Yeah, because Hollywood Shuffle was his first film. And I was supposed to do Hollywood Shuffle with him. But the day that I was called to work on Hollywood Shuffle, I got another uh, job that was a more um, a bigger role that conflicted with it. So I wasn't okay. able to to do Hollywood Shuffle. I really regret that because I really love that um, story, that film too. But Robert mm-hmm. has appreciated my work, so we are. I started auditioning for Rose, um, and even in, in his documentary, The Making of the Five Heartbeats. You know, Robert did a documentary. Um, yeah, I just I just saw it not too long ago. Oh my goodness, that was so much fun to watch. Um, he, yeah. He, story of how all of us had gone through that whole audition process and how long it took, uh, got on the shelf a couple of times and, you know, we didn't think the movie was going to get made. Um, mm-hmm. But once it did, I mean, Robert had his vision. He knew exactly what he wanted. He's definitely a hands-on director. Um, we just loved, 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 loved. It was so much fun. I mean, Robert <laughs> filmed so much uh footage of that movie he probably has enough footage to make another movie you know <laughs> he, he talked about how he had to keep cutting it down and cutting it down so there was so much more um to that movie than what you guys got to see um i had a great scene uh cut out of the movie where uh jt leon character and i mm-hmm. actually get back together before you see us at the tree 
where you see that we got married and named our first kid Duck and all that. Um, right, right. Earlier on in the movie, when the um, the manager got sick and they come to the hospital and they're all there in the room in the hospital gear, that was Rose that had given them mm. to the room um, because there was a scene where JT came to her her nurse station and ran his little game on her. Well, I mean, I guess at that <laughs> point, at that point, he was being sincere. Not like the scene in the closet where he wasn't so sincere. Right, uh, right. By that time, uh, they were really, you know, falling in love for real. And it was a great thing that, that we had at the hospital where he was being very sincere and convinced her that he loved her and she gave him, you know, his friends the the hospital stuff so they could sneak into the manager's um, room and, and see him because he wasn't supposed to have any business. Mm. So, and there are people who notice that and have said that. Right, right. How did they get into that hospital room with hospital gear, you know, uh, and nobody explained how they just got in there? So some people, <laughs> are, they amaze me what, what, they, what they pick up on. Um, yeah, yeah, audience. you'll be amazed. Yeah, you know, yeah. some audiences, you know, they're so in tune to every scene that they're trying to follow the continuity, man, big time. Exactly. Know? Oh, yeah, of course. It, especially so on uh, who stuff see like that, that. Now you know there was another scene in there. <laughs> <laughs> One thing in the, in the documentary that um, I was, you know, kind, not shocked, but uh, I'll say shocked um, yeah. to find out um, on the on the documentary uh, was about how Robert was saying about the process and how he had to shoot the movie in reverse. Oh yeah, and I know that must have been. Well, I know it was challenging for him. Um, for you though, how yeah. was how was that? Well, you know, it was easier for us. I think he did that because that was the easier way for the uh, actors not to have to go in and out of hairstyles. Because um, once they went back to the '60s and you know um, the previous years, they had mm-hmm. to do all the guys. They had to do that thing in their hair. That what it's called process or something. Um, yeah, yeah. So, but in the beginning, shooting it, um, the end of it, where they had all we had all grown up. Well, we could be more of our normal people who we were. Our our, mm-hmm. our hair in the later years was closer to who we were in real life. So, right. um, you know, they didn't have all that process here um, at the end of the film. So they could start at the end of the film. We could shoot the end of the film and go backwards. That way they wouldn't have to be going in and out of those hairstyles because they're shooting mm-hmm. scenes um, so sporadically like that. I think that's what, yeah, uh, yeah. I think that's why he did it. That's what I remember him saying the reason why we were shooting it that way yeah mm-hmm. well I'm, but yeah, I'm definitely first, glad the first day of filming was the last scene in the movie <laughs> right yeah 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 I, that, i'm that definitely glad yeah yeah and it's almost weird when he when he uh said that because now when you think about it it's almost like wow so they really had to play uh a relationship that they had never even uh, uh started Oh no! Well, well, you know they had already been, you know, rehearsing together. Yeah. Right, right, know. of course. But I, I mean, as far as like, you know, them in, being in the group but and everything. Gone and... through all that stuff. Yeah. Right. <laughs> gone through it yet. exactly, and that's something. Yeah, yeah. So those that's guys, crazy. Were, they were amazing. I mean, it's the movie. The Roger movie is such a classic. I mean, the, yeah, I it was, is. I was blown away. I used to visit that set. Just because I wanted to be around them, even when I wasn't working, wow. I just wanted to be on the set. And actually, it worked out great for me. One day I was visiting the set, I ended up getting it into an extra scene, which is one of the mm. scenes. Is it, they've made memes about it and everything. That scene where the guys are being kicked off the stage, a house full of oh love, yeah, oh yeah. And and then they Robert cuts to me and uh, Troy Bayer, baby doll in the audience, right. reacting to the fact that 
they're booing them and then they they get over the booze and, and something comes out of them. All of a sudden it's the best performance they've ever done. And, and we were amazed. Mm-hmm. That, that little, those little clips, Robert added us. I was visiting the set. We were sitting around talking, you know, and he was like, no, you know what? You need to go put your clothes on. You need to go get dressed. But yeah. So he, he had a scene in mind. He just developed a scene in his head from us just sitting there talking that day, you know? So he, he's just, wow. Just a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant man. Uh, Robert has a, uh, and his heart is, is, is the same, too. He's, you'll never meet another human being that, um, you know, better than him. He he cares about people. I mean, I'm, I, I'm getting tearful just, just thinking about how, wow. how kind he was. And, I mean, his heart is in that movie, no question about it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you can tell... Um, from from just not be, even before the documentary, just looking at the movie itself, you can tell. And mm-hmm. when he made that documentary and just explained how the whole process worked, it was like a mind blower. It was like, wow, okay. Yeah. But you <laughs> he never gave up. Yeah. So it, yeah, it really, and I'm 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 glad yeah. that he stuck to what he knew, and then I'm also glad that he ended up with the cast that he ended up with uh, with you guys. Because yeah. I'm almost positive that it would have been a totally different movie with the first set. With the what? With the first set of people that he wanted to have it with. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I, I You know, as I say, everything happens like it's supposed to. Exactly. I I mean, I didn't think I was going to get the part. Exactly. I didn't think that mm. I had done enough. And, you know, I, I don't know. It, it, like I said, it was just being dragged out for so long. I, I think I screen tested for it and didn't hear anything. So I didn't know how right they thought I was um, for Rose. But, um, you know, I, I I have a reputation of being a good a good girl, um, I think, right. too, um, with my <laughs> role in Hollywood. I always get hired for the girlfriend, the teacher, the mom, you know. Um, so I think that that may have helped uh, because I, right. I, I, I it was Robert or somebody else and maybe one of the guys, Michael Wright or, or somebody um, said to me that, you know, you're the marrying type. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and Rose is the one that, um, you know, JP ends up marrying. So, I, I guess maybe they did want somebody that you could see that he would marry, you know, because right. out of her emotion and, and love for him and um, and all of that. And Leon and I did try to create that type of real love between us, um, too, mm-hmm. um, a real caring. And, I mean, even with, you know, that closet scene really is, I love that scene um, because it showed that, you know, she really loved him. And I'm sure she loved him before he really loved her because he wasn't ready to commit and all that. But she was already in love with him. But she wasn't going to be right. treated. <laughs> you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So yeah. when she throws a, pulls herself away from him, it's because he doesn't deserve her, you know. Type of right, thing. right. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not one of your, you know, just fly-by-night type of girls. I don't know who you think you're dealing with, you know, that type of thing. Uh-huh. So, um, but even though, like, I, I got so much flack from my family, actually, from that scene. Oh, you just let him talk you into it. That was too easy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, I was acting. It's called acting. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But, but, yeah, I mean, it's like you say, people think they, they get so much into these characters that they believe that's who you are. Um, yeah, so they do, yeah. And they Rose. They assume that there's something about me that is her, you know. Uh, right. Thing. But, but yeah, I mean, I, that experience was all about Diane Carroll for me, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, she, from the first day, like I said, that was our first scene. My first scene. Can you imagine me sitting there at a table um, just Talking it up, having fun with Diane Carroll. I mean, uh-huh. I, was, I was like, this is not happening. I <laughs> and then for her to be so generous, because some some celebrities 
especially icons. I mean, more than just oh, yeah. being a celebrity. I mean, she's a legend. Um, right, right. They, they don't want you approaching them. They don't want you talking to them. They, they're mm-hmm. on this pedestal, and they're okay with that, you know, type of thing. So, yeah. but no, there was no way that Diane Carroll was having that. She she did not allow me to feel any less than she was. And she totally embraced me as as a mentor every single day. And it took us a while to shoot that, that scene, too. It was at least, I think, three or four days um, because it was so much there to be covered you know this is the end of the movie and I think Robert definitely wanted that to be a tight scene you know um you covered a lot and us Mm -hmm. sitting there at the table for days on end I mean she was the one that just she just kept talking to me she she just shared all this stuff that she's been through in the business and um what she thought, what she knew was going to happen to me because she sees herself in me. And I mean, she just, wow. it, was, it was such, and, and I'm so grateful for it because she was right. It, it, it kept me on the right path of things that were being thrown at me later that she said mm-hmm. was going to be thrown at her, you know, started happening. So here I was able wow. to say, wow. And and she told me how to handle this, you know, type of thing. So that mm-hmm. that that was a that was a luxury for me that that I I will just never forget. And I'm so grateful to her. And I have really patterned my career behind Diane Carroll. I say it all the time, you know, when I get a role, wow. and I'm going to be Diane Carroll type. I'm going to be. <laughs> 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 Is 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 yeah. I, I I almost search for her in, in everything that I do. It's just how much I I love her. I just love her. Yeah. But that's I mean, not a that's not a bad thing to 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 do, you know. Um, and, yeah. and to have somebody that iconic and 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 that experience uh, to even want to share something with you is just you know amazing. Yeah. Um, and was- and I'm sure. You you know, in your mind, you were probably like doing black backflips at the time. But <laughs> oh my god, I was. But I mean, I had to keep. Yeah, I had to I'm keep sure. saying, Don't don't get too excited, Deb. Just 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 relax, Deb. You know, she's she's <laughs> she's, she's, she's being nice. Just just go with it. Just go. With it. <laughs> because yeah, you 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 want to put these people in some other category, you know, that they're almost not human you know type right. right um but so to to see someone who meets you at at your own level it it, it was just it was like a mom it, it was like she just embraced me and that's the way she wanted me to feel i have a picture with her from the premiere night i happened mm-hmm. to be walking past her and you never know exactly and then that was that that was working on the set that was filming you know that was that, you know, we said goodbye, that was goodbye, you know, type of thing. I never right, right. again after that. Um, but then we had the premiere night, and she's there on the red carpet, you know, doing all these interviews and cameras going crazy because it's Diane Carroll and everything. I happened to walk past her in the red carpet, and she was being interviewed and stuff, and she caught my eye. I caught hers, and I, I waved and said hi. And do you know that Diane Carroll reached her arm out and she said, oh, I need a picture with this beautiful lady. And she pulled me into her, into her interviews and put her arm around my waist and hugged me into her. I just, I, I there's pictures with me beaming with this smile on my face. <laughs> like I, I never beamed like that before. I, I was, I thought I was in some dream or something. It, I, I couldn't believe that she did that, and she was whispering to me how proud she was of me, and and you know, sque- pushing a, a my me into her way, squeezing me, saying, uh, "You remember what I told you?" And and I'm really proud of you, and you keep it up, you know. It was like she wanted me wow. to get revalidated that I, you remember what I told you, you know. Mm-hmm. I was, mm-hmm. I was here, and I, I just, I, I don't know, I, I just. I, I I don't know why I deserve that, but 
it was it was very special. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that is amazing. <laughs> I just found um, I just pulled one of the pictures up, but that is um it is it's amazing for you to for one not only see that the people that we sometimes watch on TV or or we uh you know admire are not yeah. really um you know stuck up or or you know divas oh, or yep. exactly. things like that. I mean, you said they're and, and not they, for that reason. It is the same thing when yes, I worked with yes. Griffin Hines. He was another mentor. Loved him. Everybody loved. Anybody who mm-hmm. worked with Griffin Hines knows his heart as well. I, I, oh, I yeah. got a chance to, to play on his show, the Griffin Hines show, he, when he did his show for CBS. Um, they brought me on as a love interest to him. I, mm-hmm. I um, Griffin Hines was amazing. It was the same thing. He 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 had a quote he, he said to me in one of his mentoring sessions <laughs> because every day I got to work with him for a week too because uh, the sitcoms you rehearse for four or five days and then you film on on that Friday so okay. for four or five days and all those rehearsals you know we just got to talk and, and, and get to know each other and everything and he was another one that just totally reached out to me with all of his wisdom and, and, and guidance and um, he said something to me that I never forgot too about being a celebrity you know that, that they don't the real actors don't relate to that it, it's not about we're not in it to be celebrities that's not what it's about you, you're not better than, than anybody else I mean there's you're an actor and I'm an actor and you can't be intimidated by other actors so that that was I learned a lot from um from Gary Hines as well too. It's beautiful, beautiful spirit, beautiful soul. We had so much fun together. It was, and to this day wow. Gregory Hines sent me the biggest bouquet of flowers in my dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> than anybody has wow. ever seen before. I mean this 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 welcome to the show. Um bouquet of flowers that he that had delivered to my room was it was massive i mean it was I mean, exactly it had yeah, yeah flowers it had little knickknacks it had i mean it had everything in it, it was, <laughs> he, he's, a, he's a special guy yeah yeah it, it's a blessing and i must say miss deborah i know you know this already but you have uh really been blessed um even with, with with just having moments um, like that, I you know it's it's not every day that somebody can give you advice who knows exactly what they're talking about and who is, you know, of their uh, statue, you know, yeah. or who who has their career, who has their their knowledge, their you know years in the business. It takes um, the time. And, you know, to do right, that. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's really uh, amazing. Um, Thank just you. to have that, that, that opportunity. Thank you so much. Yeah. I, I told I told Hawthorne well. um, when when I did my interview with him, I said it must have been, uh, excuse my French, hell um, mm-hmm. to have Diane mm-hmm. Carroll slapping you <laughs> in I mean, that funeral it, scene. It, yes. Oh my God, that was a great scene. I was there for that scene as <laughs> well too. And again, the power um, that they they had it just it was so real. Yeah. And the the tears that we were feeling, they made it real. I mean, it it was, absolutely. It was it was a very very powerful. I mean, and I was sitting behind Diane Carroll in that scene too, and mm-hmm. I could feel her presence, um, her grief. Um, when he approached her, and and that that indignation, like you said, we're feeling now, uh, that mm-hmm. he felt of how dare you even come close to me, and to even speak to me is even worse, you know, type of thing. Right, it was, right. It was amazing. It, it was, I mean, to, and, and so that that's the kind of stuff that I'm trying to bring to my work when when I'm in the presence of such greatness like that it kind of puts a stamp on you you know what i'm saying yeah yeah it kind of 
you want to absorb that and recreate that and say, yeah, that's what I'm trying to be about. That's an actor. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The the realness that is created just out of, you know, knowing who that character is. You get into that moment and that's it. That's, that's what came out. She, she, she was being who that woman was, you know? It's, right, it's right. Because yeah. that, that scene, I, I mean, the, the whole movie, but that, like you said, that scene was just powerful. Um, yeah. And the fact that both of them played the role so well that you, I mean, if you think about it, you had totally forgot who Diane Carroll was and who Hawthorne James was because now you looked at him as the characters. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. It, it you know that amazing. that's how they would relate to each other. Exactly. Right, exactly. right. And he it would have the to approach her because of who he is, you know, type of thing. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And, and she would, you know, strike back because of who she was, you know, type of thing. So, yeah, mm. it's, it's so I'm saying Robert, he, you know, he he just he just knew he he every moment of of that film was something that he saw in his vision, you know, and and he yeah, was able yeah. to bring it out in us. He was able to because he's definitely a, an actor's director. I guess being an actor that that helps because he's a great actor as well. You see, so he yeah, knows absolutely. where the emotion comes from um, as an artist, as an actor himself. Too. So mm-hmm. he knew how to recreate all of that stuff, um, the emotion and actors express it in a way that we would get it, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Because when he was explaining to me, I don't think they had actually done that uh, whole scene on stage when we did our close up of the, the, the two girls, Rose and um, Baby Doll, reacting to that. Scene. Does people say that's one of the powerful scenes in the movie too? When, when oh you know, yeah, oh yeah, they put their hands together. Let's do it like we did in the you know on the street. The song uh-huh. "Love" comes out completely in that scene, and Tico coming out with that powerful voice, you know, with that high yeah. note. I mean, it's a very, it's a very powerful um, scene, and he was describing it to us but we hadn't seen it mm-hmm. yet so just the mm-hmm. fact that so I was so grateful to see it that he had coached us through it of what had happened because it did fit it, it was exactly wow. the emotion that we needed to give that scene because the way that scene ended up playing out he knew exactly mm-hmm. what, he, what he needed us to do and he asked us to do it I mean it was just and so it worked. That's what I'm saying. That just clicked in his head that day. He knew that scene was coming, so he was like, "Oh, I mm-hmm. need this action," you know. And and there yeah, it was. I, I, created another scene. R- just, yeah. Robert yeah. Um, Townsend is definitely um, a visionary, and I don't think a lot yeah. of people realize that. Um, from from acting to directing and producing, he really oh, yeah. is a visionary, and I and, and you can see that in that film and even. Um, his other films, um, but I particularly like uh, Meteor Man too. Um, yeah. yeah, which which you had a, like a, sm- a small role in there too. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, he put me in, in there, one of the wives to somebody. Yeah, it was a small scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, just to show, um, you know, that that kind of um, yeah. visionary uh, and, and thing like that on screen. I mean, that because was one of the. Superheroes—the idea that a black man could be a superhero, absolutely. Right, right. That was something and, that and he, he had all kind of people in there. Yes, yeah, because yeah, people want to support that. Robert wants to do something different. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He, he wants to be uplifting, inspirational, empowering. You know, it, it, and and this is why people who work with him want to keep working with him. Every, every time I see him, I'm like, okay, what's next? When are we going to get, you know, exactly. <laughs> we need to get another job. We need to do something, you know, that type of thing. I mean, he's busy, yeah. you know, directing, doing his TV stuff now. But, yeah, all of us and, and the 
five heartbeats. When we do these Q and A's and stuff, you know, Robert shows up, he speaks, and you know, a lot of the actors show up uh, to support him, and and that's always when we get him, you know, talking. Okay, when we <laughs> what's the next project? You know, we. We, we, we trying to get back on screen with you, Robert Townsend. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I just seen him and um and Leon do um an interview the other day on uh, uh I can't remember the guy's name, but it's a, one of those shows on Fox. So, um, and they were talking about the five heartbeats then. Uh, I think yeah. it was my, probably like a week or two ago, matter of fact. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Ro- Robert is uh, a, a true, like I said, a true visionary. In fact, that he fought. What I respected was um, the fact that he fought so hard to keep Tressa Thomas uh, part in him. Oh, and yeah. Again, he, he really the movie that he was making. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 He really was a, uh, a force behind helping her, you know, be a star. Um, yeah. You know, and, and that's, that's something that was like, wow, okay, so you care that much to push somebody or keep somebody, you know, in this position, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, but, yeah. but look what it did for the movie. That's a classic scene as well. I mean, it's just so many. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people recreating that scene. Uh, you know, it, cause somebody sent me a video, uh, mm-hmm. this young comedian who starts, he, he create, he's recreating that scene. He's playing both okay. roles. He's playing um, Robert, the brother, and the sister. <laughs> he, does this, he he does this uh what do you call that thing when you're um talking over somebody the the the, the force over no no the the you're recreating the you're singing the song like lip singing i guess yeah he he's okay lip-sing. okay yeah he's lip singing the scene and and acting it out he's playing both roles so he's 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 doing Robert's <laughs> voice and he's doing the girl's voice. He's doing all the activity that they're doing. He, he gets this broom that's supposed to be the girl that he's dancing with. The sister. It's really funny. <laughs> um, and Robert told me that wow. he, thought, he thought it was so funny. But yeah, when you when you see people doing that kind of stuff, I mean, it's just so flattering uh, to your work that you know that the work has affected you um, that way. And it's, it's just a great feeling. It really is. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, but I and think, just I speaking think of... Be yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, you, yeah, absolutely. But I was just saying, just speaking of your work, um, out of all the roles that you have, have you, uh, besides the five heartbeats, do you have a favorite that you played? Well, um favorite hmm. I don't know I mean I I, I played a, um, I guess you know I, it, it would have to be Deep Space Nine it, it would have to be um, San Francisco um, in Star Trek Deep Space Nine yeah first of all I, yeah. I'm just I'm just honored 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 beyond honored um, to be a part of Star Trek history but I got to work with Avery Brooks I mean, that was right. just their incredible, another mentor, you know. I mean, I'm I'm just so blessed when I get these iconic actors opposite them and and they embrace me. Because you never know, I've been opposite those two who are right, iconic right. And, and, and they don't want nothing to do with you, you know, type of thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and I respect that. And so I would never approach another actor without their permission. I mean, that's certainly um, the way it is, you know, type of thing. So right. um, when he opened up his heart to me, um, Avery, when we, we were in the um, makeup trailer at my first day, and he has a separate compartment of the makeup trailer that's his own because he's a star but the door was of course <laughs> when I was there yeah and his door happened to be open to the rest of the trailer and he saw me sitting there and he jumped out of his seat oh my goodness you you must be Sarah you're playing my mother and he came over and he shook my hand and he hugged me and he said, this is going to be great welcome welcome oh I'm so happy to be I mean, I couldn't believe that he was being so friendly. 
to me. Yeah. I was like, again, Absolutely. Mr. Hawk, man. I mean, it's like, <laughs> I, I just, I have so much respect for these brilliant actors. I would never assume that, you know, they would put me in their embrace, you know, type of thing. Um, but this is who they are. When when they don't see themselves as some, you know, untouchable being, um, they respect actors. I, I'm the same way. Right. I, I don't I don't allow people to put me on some kind of separate being than who they are as actors, you know, type right, of thing. Right. And we're all here to create whatever we we're, we're trying to create. And that's what the best work is gonna come out of that anyway. So from that moment Avery and I connected. He made that connection, um, and it was sincere. And so I was able to work with him once we got into the rehearsal process. I was very open to anything that he had to say. He was very open to anything that I had to say. And he pretty Mm -hmm. much carried me through who this God woman was, because I wasn't a part of Deep Space Nine. I didn't know the whole history of the show or anything like he did. But he shared all of that. I mean, I had been following Star Trek. I had auditioned for Star Trek for years and years, all the different ones. Uh, but right. But the first time I actually got a chance to work on one. And um, it was the best one. It, it was the best role that they could give me. It, being his mother and this spirit being who only came to him in a vision, um, it, it, Avery helped me with that. He He was like, you're a god, you know, you, you're you above us all. Um, mm. When he said that, my whole posture changed. And I knew what he was mm. trying to tell me, that that's who you are, so own it, you know. Right. Okay. So that was it. When, once, once he said that to me, Sarah became very clear. I mean, she was a compassionate woman. The director, producers of the show, was always sending me little notes, you know, saying how much they loved what I was doing because they loved the connection that she was making with Avery that came out of me and my work with Avery because none of the other gods Mm -hmm. had ever had any connection with the other people. Other people in the show Mm -hmm. were getting visited from gods, but the gods were always separated. They they never showed any emotion toward Right, uh, right. But here I was being his mother and a god at the same time. So that just came out of the natural thing that was happening between me and Avery. We, we, I just cared about him. Everything that about him that I said to him came from a mother and a god. You know, she wanted to protect right. him. But she also knew that she had taken his real mother away from him. As so people always say, how do you get to play Avery's mother? You're so young. How could you? <laughs> well, when when Avery was young, his mother was young. This god took over her body, and that's and right. that's so. If you're a god, your body doesn't change. I mean, that's who she was. So she remained that person when she came back to him in a vision. So it's deep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's deep space nine. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and and Star, of course, Star Trek was such a, a huge um, and innovative franchise. Even yeah. with going back uh, to when uh, Nichelle Nichols uh, was there, oh, uh, yeah. you know, it, it's it's just been such such a huge brand yeah. um, all the way up until when you were there. I mean, it it, it was so. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, how do you say it? Well, yeah, that. yeah, and, and for it to be science fiction, I think that's the reason a lot of people watched it and loved it. And yeah. you know, it, it, it's in the future, and you know, so it, it was just very the story, uh, innovative. The stories were the stories were about love and unity, right? And tolerance, you know, and 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 embracing people and understanding different cultures, all these different worlds of people had to do with races of people. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. So I think and especially from what I've done, I, I've been I've done a couple of conventions, uh, Star Trek conventions over my career. If they invite me, I, I go, you know. I, okay. I've met fans um on these conventions. Um the first one I did, the Vegas one is the biggest one. They have one every year. 
they probably never have it this year because of the virus. But um, let's say it's in August, though, so maybe they will have it. Um, but it's the big one where they bring together all of the Star Trek series and the actors and, and everything. Um, so they invited me this one year, a couple years ago. And it was the first time I got to it. And the first time they got to see San Francisco. Um, and so people were all excited to meet me. I had no idea that <laughs> they were like that, man. But I had lines of people, you know, um, trying mm -hmm. to meet me and, and get a, a talk to me and um, you know, get a picture and all that, too. But but they were really wanted to know, wanted to talk to me about San Francisco. I mean, they're commitment to the stories um, and who these characters were was so real. I mean, it, it, it yeah. had what these stories were about and, 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 and what they represented. And what I got the most was the tolerance and, and how Star Trek teaches people to care about other cultures. That was a big thing. Mm -hmm. Most of them who talked about it that's what they told me. That's what they got of it. Got out of it. The reason they love Star Trek so much is because it's like embracing a lot of different races of people and, wow. and who they are and what they're about and and where they come from and and how the differences are something to be embraced. You know that mm -hmm. that they can learn from uh, how different people are and and when and one you know alien is being attacked that you know, others feel like they have to come on board and, and protect them, you know, type of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was, it, it's a lot of that good versus evil. Um, right. Right. In that, in, in the, in their history. So it, 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 it really opened my eyes. I mean, these, these Trekkies are something else, man. They take it very <laughs> seriously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They get yeah. really, um, it, uh, shows like that and, and franchises, uh, movies like that, um, yeah. I noticed that they get really, really invested in those uh, kind of things to the point that they almost know more about the character or the franchise than you do. Oh, my God. It's almost I mean, like, they what? Were <laughs> I mean, I, I, they were teaching me. I, I, I had no, And then, you know, for them to have so much love um, for me, because I played the role. I mean, I got emotional so many times <laughs> from people, <laughs> you know, that just wanted to meet me and were in tears meeting me and hugging me. And I mean, I, I got overwhelmed. My sister was with me um, there. She lives in Vegas. And okay. she, I mean, she just kept having to keep hugging me <laughs> to, to <laughs> calm me down because these people were so giving and so loving. I just got overwhelmed several times. Um, this one guy came up to me in a wheelchair my last day there. And I guess because it was my last day too. And he started expressing all of this love through this. He was in some kind of tube that he had to speak through. And because obviously his disability was very severe. And right, right. then he was a, um, a Deep Space Nine uh, Trekkie. Loved the show. And just mm -hmm. approached me, started talking to me when I was at my table screaming, it's San Francisco, the home of this. Oh, my God. I just, and he starts telling me how much he loved me and just wanted a picture. And I, I just, I lost it. I, I just, and then my sister was like, <laughs> Get it, hold it together. Get it. He's and then he's apologizing. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make you cry. You know, I said no, no, believe me, it's you. It's just I, I just, I just feel so, so much love. I just appreciate it. You know, so much. Right, right. He just he made me feel so loved. It was it was amazing, and I I just I just like my mom has this saying. I just take took that with me. You know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And it, it's amazing when you can see people really appreciate the love, uh, I mean, the work that you do, and show you yeah. love, uh, you know, just from that. So that it, it's really something amazing. So much to him. And and he expressed it. And he needed to. It was, 
what was so amazing. I mean, they're all like that. I, I say to people, the Trekkies are, are the best fans I, I've ever encountered. I mean, there's people <laughs> who want my autograph because they've seen me and stuff and want to talk to me. And the five heartbeats, yeah, that's true. I, I get recognized from that a lot. And, and I am amazed. I tell people that even to this day, and young people who recognize me from the five heartbeats, that was 30 years ago. I'm like, oh, my God, mm-hmm. you're really good. You know, that type of thing. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Trekkie is, is, you know, they recognize you because of their love of the show, you know, and, and the history right. and what the character represents and all that. So his love was coming from a whole nother level. You know, it was it was coming mm-hmm. from God this woman represented in a show that he loved, too. So it just, yeah. it just meant so much to him. Um, that it made me, it, it meant a lot to me, you know, that, that, he yeah, was absolutely. There. Yeah. It was, it was something, as I say, you know, and, and this is, that's not really why I do what I do. I appreciate it and, and all that, but the accolades of, of, of that, it's, it's more for them than it is. Mm-hmm. And, and I learned that early on in my career, um, and Diane and, you know, other people that talk to me about fans and all that, um, too. There is a separation, you know, you, 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 you deal with that, but you don't put it in your head, you know, it's, right. you, you owe them that because they appreciate who you are and, and they, and they want, you know, to feel like it means something to them. But that's what you're doing it for. You're doing it for them. You're not doing it for you. I mean, I sign my my name when I'm writing a check. That's about it. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> it's for me. You know what I'm that's saying? That's true. <laughs> but for them, it, it, you know, I have to do it because it means something to them. So I, I give a signature um, to them because they're asking for it, not because it means anything. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So yeah, okay. we've been talking well, a lot. I don't know. I feel like I've talked a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's okay. You bring in a lot of um, great memories. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm glad to, for one, talk about something that can be, uh, you know, of light and love, and you know, those kinds yeah. of things. And I'm also glad to hear stories of people who've been through things that you know you might not know, and 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 you've been an actress people may not know, you know, when you go home, how you feel or what you feel or what you go through because they see you as Sierra Cisco or they see you as Rose or they see you as uh, Carla or, you know, so they may not yeah. know those kind of things. And those, that's what I'm, I'm most glad to hear. You know, when you tell these stories, you know, it, it's just showing uh, the other side of the actress. Deborah yeah. Matthews. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, I'm because just glad we're, we're, about that. We're people, we do what we do. Um, but I'm, like I said, the blessing is that after 30 years, I'm able to continue what I love. So yeah, I'm grateful. I, I'm grateful that I hope there's more roles to come, you know. Um, I'm still auditioning mm-hmm. for, for great stuff, you know. Okay. So, I'm hoping that there's a lot more um, that I'm going to get to do. Yeah. Well, is there like a um, specific role that you, uh, a dream role that you want now? Um, well, you know, I actually wrote a script, um, a pilot um, with a, another writer friend of mine. And I, I would like to see this show uh, get off the air it is a drama I, I, you know i want to play the mother the professional woman the wife um the sexy wife absolutely okay. yeah you know, the <laughs> mother, the wife, absolutely um i want to incorporate all of those things that we don't see in network prime time in a black mm-hmm. I, I don't know where that black family drama is i i don't know why they don't i mean this is us is great it's and, and it's probably the closest thing to what I'm talking about, but I'm talking about right. that being the show, not one of the characters on the show. I'm talking right. about an hour drama that I think way back 
uh, the last one that I, I can't remember the name of it, but um, what's his name was was on it. Um, no, I don't know. I can't call his name now. Um, with the voice, the CNN voice, the guy. <laughs> well, I can't call his name now. Um, but he was the last time that there was a black drama, an hour drama on network prime time. And I don't understand that. I, I don't understand how they don't see that a show like that would have value. And maybe that's about to happen too, with all of this unrest uh, that they will see that us seeing each other on TV would help. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, like Absolutely. those pop, those positive in in uh, pop positive in it images can't even get it out. Um, <laughs> you know that people look to for inspiration um, and role models as they do anybody else um, needs to happen in in a black family drama as well. So that's my hope that. And maybe that's my series regular role is something that I'm going to have to create for myself. So mm-hmm. we'll mm-hmm. see. But yeah, that's there. There's a pilot that I that I wrote, and we'll see if I can get it out there. <laughs> All right, I definitely hope so. Um, and then you, besides the uh, a hope a house divided, um, what else are you working on, or is there anything else right now? Oh my goodness. What else is going on right now? <laughs> well, nothing too much lately because of this, um, um, you know, pandemic. But well, there's, of course. A, there's a, uh, I'm doing my first horror film and we got put on hold. That's what I was um, getting ready to start work on. Um, okay. A, a horror film, in which I've never done before. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. So, we're mm-hmm. we're hoping that we're gonna be able to get start back up in September. But that's the next thing that um I'm playing one of the characters in the movie. Um and I can't even think of get the name of it. I should have I should have had that for you. Ready to tell you that. <laughs> um but we we it hasn't gotten released or anything like that anyway yet, but we're just going into production for it. But yeah, my character okay. um is 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 in it from beginning to end. Um, I like to laugh, and I tell people that I'm doing a, a horror film that the black girl actually lives. <laughs> <laughs> you, that's a good one because you know they always say uh, we you know, don't make it. It's a running joke. Right? <laughs> because because yeah, I, yeah. Because first one I was telling people that I'm getting ready to do this horror film, they were like, "Oh, do you live?" How soon do you die? <laughs> you know, that type of thing. And I'm like, no, no, she doesn't die. You know, she actually kind of gets to be a little bit of a hero through through the whole thing, you know. Um, well, that's a good thing. It, it's really good. It, I, I'm I'm excited about it. It's kind of like a, a poltergeist film. Um, the house is taken over by some evil entity, and, you know, we all got to get out of there. So, yeah, of course, mm, some people okay. die, but some people don't. But, but yeah, she gets to survive, so I was really happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> but that'll definitely be uh, interesting to see once it comes out. So I'm definitely going to be looking forward yeah. for that. Yeah, um, I'm definitely to know. But yeah, of course. It, but this has been a uh, a very uh, uplifting conversation, I must say, for me. And I do yeah. thank you so much for doing this today. Um, thank you. Before you go, though, just let everybody know where they can find you, like social media, or your if you have website, any all that stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Instagram, uh, you can find me at I am Deborah Lacey. Um, mm-hmm. The way I spell my name: D E B O R A H L A C E Y. I am Deborah Lacey. Um, I do have a um, a fan page on Facebook, which is actress. Deborah Lacey at actress Deborah Lacey. I don't really do any other social media to tell you the truth. Um, I okay. I was I have a Twitter account, but I don't honestly I don't go there. It is Deborah Lacey for uh, the number four Deborah Lacey four. But I just okay. found Twitter to be so mean 
and then and then you know people <laughs> retweet mean stuff. I, I'm not even following. Certain yeah, people, they do. <laughs> but I have to hear their tweets because other people are following them and retweeting them, and so I got frustrated with with Twitter. So I can control. <laughs> <laughs> I can control what I do um, uh, better, and so I, I don't I don't go to Twitter that often. Um, okay. But there is a there is an account there. But every now and then I'll I'll I'll, I'll share something with Twitter. But for the most part, um, I would love to see people on Instagram. So yeah, follow me. All right. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, this is none other than Miss Deborah Lacey. Thank I want to thank you again. Okay. <laughs>